can start it. Let's start it. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the definition of a verb, but I want you guys to do it on today, okay? So I'm going to ask the question, what is a verb? Asa, could you give us the first word? you back on my return. Uh, okay, Braley, can write the next one? Let's see if we know our definition. That's it. The verb is up. Okay, Kendall. That as they rushed through the air, as they were flying over the lake, Bunny saw something big in the water. He leaned over to see what it could be. He was so inter interested that he forgot to keep his arms around Mr. Crane's neck. And suddenly, down, down, went one okay. and dropped splash in the water. Okay, so they're, so they're, you know, soaring over the lake and Bunny's excited, right? He got too excited because what did he end up doing? Falling in the water. He let go and he ended up falling. Yes. Okay, 80. Uh, a verb is a word that does. Oh, back to you, Asa. A verb is a word that does. And. And. Okay, last word. The back of the big thing. And with what did you suppose it was? It was old Mr. Al Al Alier, who was talking his afternoon nap. Well, maybe you think. Or that is not what that is. Afternoon. Well, Mr. Alligator wasn't surprised. Okay, she does. Okay, she does never. Good. All right, awesome. So today, guys, um, we're gonna go over action verbs. So yesterday I wrote sentences with an action verb. Today I'll give you an action verb and I want you to make the sentence. Okay. So you need a little sleep paper. So you can do that. He didn't like her. Here. 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 Here.
Play. All right, so we're ready. Okay, so we're ready, yes. Okay, so our first action verb is clap. Give me your own sentence with clap. Action verb, clap. All right, let's hear some. I'm not going to call everyone. I'll just call a few people. Just, you know. All right, Kendall, let's hear your sentence with action verb clap. I can clap fast. I like, I like to clap. Okay, Asa. I can clap with my hands. I can clap with my hands. Good. All right, let's do another action verb. Shout. Shout.
Yeah. All right, so shout. Let's hear some sentences with shout. Braylee? Mom shouted because I was late for school. Okay, Asa? I had to shout to get attention. I had to shout to get attention. Good. Okay. And David? I shouted mom's name. All right. Let's do another one. Cry. Give me a sentence with action verb. Cry. So mom said, uh, I'm going to ride the All right, let's give a sentences for cry. Cry. Okay, Micah. A tiny baby can cry. Cairo. My little brother cried. And Elijah? Huh? My baby cried. My baby cried. I was a baby. I cried. When I was a baby, I cried. Okay, let's do one more. Dance. My dog can do. My dog can I'm 
Okay, dance. Kendall, I can dance. I was dancing so much, I fell. I was dancing so much, I fell. Asa? I can dance well. I can dance well. Me and mom can dance. I dance every day. I dance every day. My fighting robot can dance. My fighting robot can dance. I dab when I dance. Huh? I dab when I dance. I dab when I dance. Okay, Braylee. That's good. There was a party and I had to dance. Good. Okay, good. All right, let's go ahead and get out our science and social studies. Let's go over our lessons for this week. I did every day today. No, let's let's start with our science, story. talking about animals. Let's go to page 48. Give it. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna put it back in the color box. No, put it in there where it goes. Friday, I use it for a waste. No, yeah, because look, it has the same. Okay, put it back in there. 
Almost all animals that are born will drink milk from their mothers. Their mothers will take care of them until they get big enough to catch food. So there are two ways that baby animals come into the world. One way is by them being born. What that means is they will live, they will grow inside of their mom's stomach until they are ready to come out. Just like we, you know, when we're, we were born, right? We were in our mom's belly until it was time for us to come out when the Lord was ready to bring us out. So baby animals that are born, that is where they come from. They are born inside of their, they are, they grow and develop inside of their mom's stomach until their time is up for them to come out of her stomach when God is ready for them to come out. So every animal that is born will drink milk from their mom. That's where they get their food. They don't eat food. They will drink milk until a certain time, until they are a certain age. Every baby animal that's born from their mom's belly will drink milk. That's like you as a baby. You get milk from your mom as well. What? Yep. So when baby kittens are born, they cannot see or walk. So they need their mother. So some baby animals, not only do they need their mom for milk, but they also, a lot of them are born blind and they cannot walk. So a lot of animals will need their mom to protect them and to guide them while they are little babies until they're old enough where their eyes will open and they're able to start walking on their own. When they get bigger, they'll be able to kind of go out and go on their own. But while they are little, they're blind, they can't walk. They really need their mom's protection to keep them safe. Okay, so baby bears, for example, they are born in the winter and they are born with mother bear in the cave. That's why a lot of times you don't see bears in the winter but when they come out in the spring, you'll see the babies because they're born during the winter. They'll stay inside the cave until they're old enough to come out of the cave and they'll make sure to stay close to their mom so that they are safe during that time. So they are blind as well and helpless. And like I said, a lot of animals, when they're born, they're blind. A lot of them cannot see, they cannot walk. So they really need their mom to protect them. Just like we need our parents to protect us when we're babies and even little you know, um, baby animals are the same way when they're born. They need their mom for milk. They need her for protection. They need her to keep them safe as well. They are blind. They can't see. So they really need their mom. Okay. Let's look at 49. So let's look at a mother mouse. Now we know mice are pretty small, right? And so a mother mouse, she can have like 18 babies. At, sorry. 12 babies at one time. That's a lot of babies, right? Oh. And they are so small. They're like the size of a jelly bean. Have y'all seen a jelly bean before? No. Yeah. Jelly beans are usually like very small, very small, like this big. So when the baby my mice are born, they're like this big. So you think they need their mom? Uh, Yeah, for her, for sure. A hundred percent, they need their mom when they are born. They are so small. They are so little. They 100% need their mom to protect them while they're born. And a lot of them don't have hair. So they're very, you know, that's why they look like that on the picture. They don't have hair. So they need their mom to protect them and keep them safe. Next, we have a baby bat. When a baby bat is born, he will hold on to his mother's wings when she flies until he's old enough to start flying on his own. She also will get food for him as well, right? So a lot of them... um. They don't, they don't know how to hunt for themselves as well. And so their mom will do the hunting for them. So, you know, it's just a lot of different things like that. What about the fish? A whale. You got babies. Okay, and then we have a whale. A whale is not a fish. It's a mammal. A baby whale is like the size of an elephant. A baby whale is the size of an elephant. So, yeah, imagine how big that is, right? A baby whale is the size of an elephant, and when he's grown, he's going to be like 30 to 50 elephants together. That's how big whales are. And even though the baby whale is big like that, the baby whale still needs its mom. Still needs its mom because it doesn't know what to do, where to go, you know, things like that. So the baby whale will still need its mom. Okay? All right, so let's look at page 50. Babies who live in pockets. So let's talk about babies who live in pockets. So in America, 
there are only like three animals that have pockets where their babies can live inside of their pockets, okay? And what I mean by that is like they have this special pouch in front of their belly where the baby can live inside of there for some time. So we're going to talk about just two of them today, which will be the kangaroo and the possum. Those two animals are animals that their babies, they have pouches and their babies can live inside of their pouches. A lot of animals don't have that. They're like one of the two only, I think it's only like three animals in the world that have pouches, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I'll confirm that. But yes, I think it's only like three animals that have pouches. All the rest of the animals, they just kind of keep their babies in nests, you know? All right. Let's see. And the alligator is on. Where's the baby rat's eye? Why do they live in pocket? Where's the baby rat's eye? Why don't they just stay by their mm -hmm. mother? Okay. So babies who live in pockets. Comparison symbols. So guys, oh no. okay babies who live in pockets the kangaroo and the possum have a pocket or pouch for their babies these babies are very tiny very helpless when they're born so they need that nice warm pouch to keep them warm and safe as they grow if they did not have that mama's pouch they'll probably die so let's talk about baby possum so a possum does have o and o before it but it's still you can say old possum or possum it's the same thing okay so there are baby possums. A baby, a mother possum can have like 18 to 20 babies at one time. It's a lot of babies, right? And they are very small. They're like the size of a dime. So they are very tiny when they're born. And then she has like 18 to 20 of those tiny babies. Oh. Yeah, she would need a, a pouch to keep track of all of those babies, right? Because it's so many of them. They can't see... They don't have hair. So those possums need their mother when they're born. So 18 to 20 of them, no hair. They're the size of a dime. They need their mom. So they will live inside of their mom's pouch for some time. After about like eight weeks, they'll come outside of her pouch. But they're still not old enough yet to be on their own. Even though they come outside of her pouch, they're still not ready to be on their own. So they will ride on her back. Okay. So they'll live inside of the mom's pouch for about eight weeks while they're getting hair, their, their eyes are opening, they're able to start growing and walking on their own. Then after eight weeks, they're still not ready to be on their own. They will start to ride on her back, as you can see on the picture. So she'll have all those babies riding on her back. Ooh, yeah. And so they'll ride on her back until they're old enough to then go out and venture out on their own as little possums, okay? So possums, there's something cool about possums. They have this thing where they can play dead, yeah. but yeah, so like if they feel danger, they'll just, their body just automatically shuts down. It's not something that they do. It's just something that the body does where it just shuts down and they'll play dead, right? Until the danger is gone. So, um, so possums, so that's a possum. They have a pouch, their babies are very small. She can have like 20 babies at one time. So she, they all live inside of her pouch for about eight weeks. Then they'll ride on her back until they're old enough to go out on their own. Okay, let's talk about the next on 52, the next animal that lives inside of a pouch. A kangaroo. Kangaroos are from Australia. You can see them here in the United States because they're usually in a zoo. But kangaroos are really from Australia. That's where they live. Okay. A baby kangaroo is called a joey. Yep. They're only one inch long, so they're tiny as well. Now, we know how big kangaroos get, right? They're not always like that. They start off 
very small. And usually the kangaroo will have maybe one baby. Sometimes she'll have two babies, but most of the time they have one baby. So they're not strong when they're born. They're blind, helpless. They need to be inside of their mother's pouch, right? So they'll live inside of that pouch. As you can see, the baby's in it right there. They'll live inside of that pouch for about three months. And he's growing. He's drinking milk in there. He's getting strong in there. And then one day when he's old enough, he'll pop out. Every once in a while, they'll jump out of the pouch, but they'll go back in until they're old enough to kind of go out on their own. But until they're old enough to go out on their own, they will live inside of her pouch. That's where they will stay safe. Okay? So the joey will go in and out until it's old enough. Okay? So that's how a kangaroo and a possum are special. They have pockets for their baby's pouches. Their babies can live inside of their pouch where the baby will take some time to grow and get strong. Okay? All right, so that's it for science, guys, on the possum and the kangaroo and babies that are born. If a baby's born from their mom, they will get milk from her. Some animals have pockets like possums and kangaroos. They will each, the possum will stay in the mom's pouch for about eight weeks. Then they will ride on her back until they're old enough. The kangaroo will stay in his mom's pouch. The joey will stay in the mom's pouch until he's um, about three months old. And then he will come out and you know, go back and forth until he's old enough to be on his own or too big to go in the pouch, okay? All right, so that's it for social studies. I mean, science. So let's go to social studies. studies, page 48. Let's visit our next place. Yeah. What paper? We're going to Hilda Falls. Oh, I didn't forget. I'm about to do it. What page? 48. Oh, 48. America, visiting a couple of different places in America. Last week, we were in Plymouth, Massachusetts, right where we went to Plymouth Plantation and Plymouth Rock. What is special about Plymouth? What's special about Plymouth? Anybody remembers who were the people that, why is that a special place? You know? What's special about Plymouth? Yeah, that's what I be saying all the time. Okay, Cairo. Okay, yes, we can go to Plymouth Rock. But guys, what did I tell you about Plymouth? Who went there? Who were the pilgrims? The pilgrims. Yes, that's where the pilgrims were when they came to America. They were in Plymouth, Massachusetts. That's why we have Plymouth Rock. That the rock that they took from the beach. It has sixteen twenty on it. Plymouth Plantation shows us what their houses look like and all of that. So we're going to leave Massachusetts, Plymouth in particular, and we're going to come right next door to New York City. Yes, yes. Okay. So New York City. All right. So fun fact, this is my favorite city in the whole world. Me too. Yep. I've been to New York. So I'll show you pictures of the Statue of Liberty once the lesson is done. I'll show you because I went to see it. Have you been to uh, New York, Asa? No. Not yet? No? Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about our first stop in New York City. We're going to visit a beautiful fall, which is right here on the border of New York and Canada. It's in between both of them. It is called Niagara Falls. So Niagara Falls 
is one of the most beautiful waterfalls in America. Very beautiful waterfall. It's really huge, really large, and it's a natural waterfall, meaning God made it that way. No man created this and built this. It's a natural landmark. So millions of people travel every year to visit Niagara Falls. It fall, it's up to 190 feet high, and that's how far down the water falls. So you don't want to fall down, you know, Niagara Falls, okay? So it's on the border of America and Canada. That's what I said. It's in between both Canada, the yellow, and New York here. It's It falls in between. So there's two sides to Niagara Falls. They have the Canada side and the American side. So you can go to either one. You can go to the side that's in Canada or the side that's in America. Okay. So the Niagara Falls, very beautiful waterfall, as you can see. And I'll show you more pictures tomorrow. But as you can see here in the book, it's a very beautiful place to visit. So if you go there, you can actually ride in a boat and you can ride very close to the waterfall. I didn't see the Niagara Falls yet, but I will one day. But um. If you're riding on a boat on the bottom, I mean, like in the water, you can get very close to the waterfall, okay? So that's Niagara Falls. So another popular place in New York City is located in Manhattan on the, well, on the, on the port of Ellis Island, Liberty Island, and it is called the Statue of Liberty. Now, we talked about the Statue of Liberty already, right? When we talked about symbols in America, does anyone remember who gave? The Statue of Liberty to us. Who gave us the Statue of Liberty? Kendall, you, know, you remember what country? Who? France had gave us the Statue of Liberty. Why did they give it to us again? Why was it a gift? What was America celebrating? Why was it a gift? Uh, America's 100th birthday. Yep, that's why they gave it to America to, to celebrate the... Um, America to celebrate the... Uh, 100th birthday. So the Statue of Liberty is located in New York City, right? Remember, France gave it to us. It was a, our America was turning 100 years old. And so I asked some of these same questions on our test Friday, but America was turning 100 years old. So um, statue, the Statue of Liberty is out on like an island. So you got to kind of leave the city and travel on some water to get there. But once there, you can go, you can tour it and you can see the Statue of Liberty. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No, it no it wasn't. It was just on our book. That's why we just had it on our book. No, she showed us from the book. Yeah. So whenever we do the combo, yeah, we do the combo. She showed us. Okay. All right. So that's the Statue of Liberty. Okay. So remember, each thing represents freedom. America was free, and that's why France gave it to us to celebrate our birthday. All right. So let's look at 49. So we went from New York, and now we're going to go to our next state, which is in Baltimore, Maryland. In Baltimore, Right here. Maryland is right here. The red. Here's Maryland. And the, well, it's bigger. It's all of this. I'm just pointing to that part. What? Okay, so Maryland. Okay. Oh no, I see. All right, let's look at 49. Let's talk about Fort McHenry. So America fought a war against England not only once but twice. They fought a war against England during the Second War against England. One of the battles took place at this fort here called Fort McHenry. Okay. During that battle, there was a man named Francis Scott Key, and he was captured by the English soldiers, and they were watching the battle go on from, he was on the ship in the water here, and the battle was going on at Fort McHenry, as you can see here, this is Fort McHenry. So, as you can see in the center of it, do you see the flag on the pole in the center of it? So during the battle that was going on, Francis Scott Key kept watch to make sure that America's flag was still in the air. Because as long as America's flag was in the air, 
That means America was not losing the war. So Francis Scott Key watched the battle happen at Fort McHenry with England. He watched it all night. And then when he awoke the next morning, he saw that America's flag was still there. So when he saw that America's flag was still there, this inspired him to write a poem, which is now a song, but it's called The Star Spangled Banner. What? Have you ever heard the song where if you watch like a basketball game, a football game, anything, and they sing and they sing that song, oh, say, can you see by the dawn? You ever heard the song before? Well, that's the song they sing. It's called The Star Spangled Banner. I'll play no. it for you guys tomorrow. But the Star Spangled Banner is a America's national anthem. And so they sing this song before most games. Like if you ever watch NFL game, football, oh, baseball, wow. basketball, any of that, they usually sing this song before it. Francis Scott Key wrote this song at Fort McHenry. That's why Fort McHenry is very special because... You, does it say they six? So what day did she sell six pies? Oh. Yeah. Okay. So he was inspired to write the song, The Star Spangled Banner, while he was at Fort McHenry. So while he was looking at Fort McHenry, he was watching the battle going on. And as he watched the battle, he wrote that song, The Star Spangled Banner. So if you go to page... In your book, let's go to page 67. We'll look at the song, The Star Spangled Banner, that Francis Scott Key wrote. Okay, you see it? So Francis Scott Key wrote this song at Fort McHenry while he was watching the battle go on. So it says, oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming? Whose broad stripes and broad stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare, bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star-spangled banner yet wave Oh, the land of the free and the home of the brave? So that is the song they sing. And Francis Scott Key wrote this song at Fort McHenry while he was watching the battle go on. Now, guys, do you see, if you look at Fort McHenry, go back to 49, what is it shaped like? No, I think I know. What is it shaped like? What's it like? Wait, the you? It looks like a snowflake. What? Not a snowflake. What? Yeah, a snowflake. A star. It's shaped like a star. So that's another cool thing about Fort McHenry is how it's shaped like a star. And so um, that's something, that's how you know it's Fort McHenry because of how it's shaped like yeah. that. Okay? All right. So that's our two places we're visiting this week, guys. We left Plymouth and we went to New York to see Niagara Falls which falls 190 feet high. It's between Canada and New York. So it's right there on the border of both. Very beautiful waterfall. And then we went to the Statue of Liberty where we can find at Liberty Island. France gave this to us for our 100th birthday. And then we went to Maryland where we visited Fort McHenry where when there was a battle, Francis Scott Key wrote the Star Spangled Banner. Okay? All right, so that's it for our social studies. Let's go ahead and do our reading. That'll be our last lesson of the day. Okay, so let's start on 99, a hike by the lake. Let's read about Jill and her family and the trip they took to the lake. On a hike by the lake. Hike I'm sorry, 98. Let's do the poem first on 98. Hike by. Wait. Hike by. Okay, well, I get it. Oh, okay, Fun at play. Okay, Asa, you can read 98 for us. Okay. <clears throat> Fun at play. The finish, I mean, the fish goes swish as he swims to the sea. The bird says tweet 
as he flies past me. The sheep, the sheep says that then sleeps in the sun. I play in the grass and have lots of fun. Good. Okay. So it's just a little poem. All right. 99. Let's start our story on Jill. Braylee? No, I'm going around, clearly. Oh. By the lake. My name is Jill. I like to hike by the lake with mom and dad. I like to feel the sun on my back and smell the fresh green. I like to see the green grass and trees. Okay. Sum it up. Mm -hmm. All right, okay. So we're introduced to Jill, right? And what does she like to do with her mom and dad? Go on a hike, Go on a hike with them, okay? So let's read about that on 100. I see a deer. I hope he cannot see. Wait. Well, me. Mm. I am glad. I am glad that God made it all. I see a a snake. It is a not a not big. It is just a grass snake. It will not run if its I stay still. It will slide by me fast. It will not bite me. I Okay. All right. So as she's out on her hike, what does she see? A snake. But should she be afraid of it? kind of snake was it it was just a grass snake it won't bite her or anything so it just went past her okay 101 Cairo oh we have to find a different one to write with because I'm, I'm on zoom oh, I hope he I hope he cannot see me Lost. if I stand still my may not see me will he stay Will he run off? He can see me. See him. Run fast into the brush. Okay. So, after this, what animal does she see? And does she, could she, should she be loud or quiet near the deer? Quiet. If she doesn't want him to run off, she should be very quiet. Okay. 102. Okay. Next, what animal does she, what animal does she see? Uh, a frog. She sees a frog, right? And so, not only did she see the frog, but she saw what come out of the water? A fish. One hundred and three. That will make a 
Bye. Fire. Fire. So we can fix hot dogs. The hot dogs. Flame them. We will toast the bun. The hot dogs. We will taste. Will no dogs will taste good. It will be fun to eat eater. Okay, so after that, what is that gonna make? A hot dogs on the fire, right? And it will be fun while they ate and you know had a little meal after their hike. Okay, one oh four. Seven. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. If I lie on the grass, grass, I can see the sky. It is blue. I mean, sky. It is blue. The sun is hot. I like to see all that God made. I like to lie here on the grass. If I stay here, I may go to sleep. Ow. Okay. So next, after J she eats, she lies on the grass. And what was she going to do? Sleep. She was going to sleep, take a nap. So when we come back from break, or, uh, sorry, tomorrow, our story will be about what she will uh, dream about while she's asleep. Okay. Yeah. All right, good. So that's it, guys. That's it for today. Yep. All right, Asa. So you have a good afternoon. I will see you tomorrow for our Bible. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.